while applying to the PhD program of reputed universities across the world, there are high probabilities that you would be asked or you have already been asked along with the application to submit either a statement of purpose or a research proposal. Now both SOP and research proposal are extremely, extremely important documents because a university most of the time does their shortlisting of candidates based on these two documents. Later on, after shortlisting, even your VIVA, your PhD interview is based completely on these two documents that you've submitted. Therefore, it is very important that you know what an SOP is, what a research proposal is, how are they similar, how are they different, what are the important characteristics. And most importantly, it is important for you to understand that how these documents should be written in a professional manner so as to ensure that you are shortlisted and later on selected in your dream institute of yours. This video has been divided into two parts. In the first part or in the first section, we are going to define what is a research proposal and what is a statement of purpose. In the second section, we are going to discuss the similarities, differences and important characteristics of these two essential documents. So if you do want in-depth knowledge, genuine knowledge related to SOP and research proposal, then stay tuned with your one and only PhD mentor, advisor and trainer, Dr. Ritika Gaba. Now let us start this section by explaining what is a research proposal. Now, research proposal is a structured formal document which has definite headings and subheadings. In a research proposal, you explain the university what you plan to research, how you plan to research and why is it important to do this research. The purpose of writing a research proposal is to convince the university that your idea is unique and is significant so that they will select you and give, them, uh, give you their resources to do your research. A statement of purpose, on the other hand, is a very creative document which has to be written very eloquently. Why? Because it is a shorter document. But in that short document also, you have to clearly explain the university, your motives and objectives behind doing research. Uh, before I end this section, I would like to bring to your notice an important point. I have gone through the regulations of many universities across the world, which includes your IIT, your IIMs and other top universities in India, and also many universities abroad, like your Yale, your Stanford, your Harvard University, Brown University, and so on. Now, seldom have I come across any university which insists on the student submitting both an SOP and a research proposal during the application stage. It is always either or either of these two documents which are asked by the university. However, because most of the time a student is simultaneously applying to multiple university and some universities insist on submitting an SOP and others insist on submitting a research proposal, Therefore, a student ends up preparing both these documents during their application process time. Let us start the second section by discussing the requirement of an SOP and a research proposal. Now, statement of purpose is a document which is only written and which is only required so as to fill in the PhD application form. Now, in case you have applied to universities which did not ask you for a, uh, for a statement of purpose, then in that case, you, will, you might never ever have to write a statement of purpose during your PhD journey. Whereas a research proposal is an extremely essential part in your PhD journey. It is in fact the very first document that you prepare in your PhD writing part. Even if you've not written a research proposal initially while filling up the application form, you will definitely, definitely have to write a research proposal when you get an admission and you start your PhD journey. 
So statement of purpose you may or may not ever write, but a research proposal you definitely will write if you are pursuing a PhD. The next characteristic that we are going to discuss relates to headings and subheadings. When we, when we talk about an SOP, an SOP does not have any headings as such. However, the university does expect to get certain answers after reading your statement of purpose. So definitely there are things that should be included in an SOP and there are things which should definitely not be included in an SOP. But there are no headings as such which are a part of your SOP. Now moving on to your research proposal. Research proposal has definite headings and many headings. In fact, it is the entire structure is made up of different headings. It's like we have an introduction, literature review, objective, uh, your research methodology, research gap and so on. Now each heading has a definite, definite meaning which the student should know about. The student should know what each heading means and what constitutes or what should be written under this heading. So this is the characteristic and the difference between SOP and research proposal when we talk about headings. First characteristic is flow. Now an SOP does not have any defined flow, any fixed flow. It is a creative document and it completely depends on the student, how they want to start it, what do they want to put in the middle and how do they want to end it. The purpose is to make this creative document short, crisp, interesting and informative all at the same time. It might sound easy, but believe me, it is not easy to write an SOP, a simple yet effective document. When we talk about a research proposal, research proposal on the other hand has a fixed flow. The, the headings, I've already told you there are fixed headings and each heading has a definite place. And this is true for universities across the globe. So whether you're writing a research proposal for the university, for a university in India or for a university abroad, the research proposal flow is more or less the same. Therefore, it is essential for you students to know what are the headings in a research proposal and which one comes first and what comes after the other. So these, this relates to the flow of these two documents. From here, we move on to the last characteristics uh, which is word now normally a statement of purpose as i've already told you is a shorter document and would be written in somewhere around 500 to 1000 words whereas a research proposal is almost double or triple the size of an sop and should be written somewhere in 1500 to 3000 words from here we move on to discussing two important points of writing these two essential documents the first point is follow all the university instructions to the core. Now, every university that tells you to submit a SOP or a research proposal also gives you a lot of instructions to write them, like the number of words they should be, how they should be formatted, what kind of referencing should they have. Now, it is important that you read these documents and also follow them to the T. If you do not follow them, then usually it has a very bad impression on the university because they feel that you are either not serious about this entire PhD program or you do not feel the university is worth the efforts. In both the cases, there are high probability that your SOP and research proposal will be rejected even without reading it. From here, we move on to the second point, which is put in a lot of time, effort and energy into writing these documents. Now, it is important that when you start writing these documents, you clearly have a picture of what exactly a research proposal is, what are its heading and how it is to be written and similarly for an SOP. Most of the time I have seen students just overnight two or three days before their submission of application, they start writing these documents. And by now you must have clearly understood that these are not documents which you can write overnight. The universities also give you a lot of time Reason being that they do want you to put that energy, that time, they want you to check, recheck and thoroughly after proper checking and rechecking, submit your research proposal or SOP. If you do not believe me what I'm saying, then here I am displaying on the screen something which has been given by Stanford University. 
you can read or I will read it out for you and you can see what they expect their PhD candidates to do for the statement of purpose. After all, if you are really serious about applying to the graduate school, then you will have devoted a lot of time to your statement. And what the reader sees is presumably the outcome of multiple drafts and prolonged effort. Poor writing and factual errors are a very strong evidence that you are not yet ready for a graduate school. I hope now you've got some clarity about what SOP is, what this proposal is and how essential these two documents are. In case at any point of time you do require some personalized mentoring, some help, some guidance in writing these documents, then you can always get in touch with me on the below mentioned number. This is Dr. Ritika Gaba and I'm here to empower you with genuine in-depth and well-researched knowledge. Thank you so much for watching my video.